The Apple Motion update released today includes the same new features introduced also today in Final Cut Pro 10.6. But since this is Motion, things work a bit differently. So even if you've watched our What's New video on Final Cut Pro 10.6, and we'll include a link below, if you use or are considering using Motion, you'll want to keep watching. First up is the ability to change the depth of field on clips shot with the iPhone 13 in cinematic mode. This works in motion much the same as it does in Final Cut Pro, but since it requires the Monterey operating system that is not yet out of beta, we're going to postpone demoing it in motion until once Monterey has been released. Next up is the object tracker. As opposed to working with a cinematic clip, you don't need to be on Monterey to use the object tracker in Final Cut Pro or motion but you will need to be on at least Big Sur version 11.5.1 .1 or later. While it's the same object tracker that's been added to Final Cut Pro, in motion it's been integrated into the existing point tracking capabilities. So for example, here I have a title and I have a clip I'd like to track it to. Under Behaviors, if I choose Motion Tracking, Match Move, nothing different here, but in the Behaviors Inspector, we now have the object tracker as the default tracking mode. You could always switch back to the legacy point tracker. If you do select the object tracker, you get the same grid that you can move around on the screen. You can add the option key for it to recognize faces or other objects, or you could adjust it manually and click analyze. I'll disable rotation since we don't need it here and play that back. And of course, I can reposition the title independent of that motion path, and it will update to that location. Just like in Final Cut, you can choose from among the four different analysis methods. So for example, if I thought it was a little bit too bouncy, I could choose Point Cloud and reanalyze. But you have more options in motion. For example, I could select the title, Go to the Properties tab of the Inspector, and for Position, I could add an Average Parameter Behavior. Note the look of the motion path in the viewer, the red line. As soon as I add that Average Parameter Behavior, it smooths out that motion path. I'll reduce the window size a little bit, and then render and play that back. And we end up with a smoother track. What's great about how the object tracker is integrated to the point tracker in motion is it makes it very easy to choose the one that works best for your current situation. For instance, here, I'd like to track this video clip of this couple into this frame underneath. And while it's possible to get there with the object tracker, this is really a better situation for a corner pin. So once again, if I choose behaviors, motion tracking, match move, in the behavior inspector, if I change the mode from object to point, I can then change the type from transformation to four corners. Then I can align the movie to my frame, adjust the alignment in the inspector, and analyze. While the object tracker works great at tracking objects, the point tracker, when set to use the four corner type, is a better solution for these kind of tracking situations. Just as with Final Cut, you can use the tracker in motion for effect masks, but it's actually even more powerful in motion and it works a little bit differently. So here I have a clip where I'd like to add a color correction to uh, the young woman's face. And the way I'll do it here is to first duplicate this clip with Command D, and then I'll apply a circle mask. I could apply any mask shape, and that mask shape can be tracked to any object. This is different from Final Cut, where it always tracks the built-in effect mask, which is always round or oval or square or rectangular. I will start with a circle mask, however, and I'll place it roughly where I want, Hold the Option key, I can drag out some feather. And then from the Behaviors pop-up menu, I'll choose Motion Tracking, Match Move. 
I'll hold the Option key down as I move the grid for the tracker, and it recognizes both their faces, and also it recognizes an object here as well, but I'll just choose her face. And I want to include both position and rotation, and I'll analyze. With the analysis done, if I select the circle mask itself, it now tracks to her, and we can treat it completely independently. There's no separate linking or unlinking of the mask from the tracker. So if I move it over here, for instance, that entire motion path will now be attached there. And not only that, in addition to adjusting the roundness or how oval it is, I can go to the inspector and convert this mask to points. Once I do that, I have independent control over each of these points, or I could add more simply by double-clicking. I'll undo that. And in the inspector, I still have feather control. So you've got much more control over your trackable masks in motion. Now that I have that mask tracked and adjusted, I'm gonna to choose to invert it by clicking the Invert Mask checkbox in the Mask Inspector. Then I'll select the video clip and to color correct it, I'll go to the color category and add a color wheels correction. Because I inverted the mask, any changes I make will be applied outside the mask. For instance, if I bring down the midtones, it will darken outside the mask, essentially brightening up her face. I'll toggle the color wheels off and on to see the result. And if I want to make an adjustment to the track, for instance, right here where she tilts toward him and the mask comes off of her a little bit, I can go right back to where before that happens. My mask is selected. I'm in the Edit Points tool. For control points, I'll set a keyframe, move forward in time, pull in that point, and then Motion will then interpolate between those keyframes to keep the mask on her. In Motion, you can also track 3D objects in the USDZ format but there's no need to publish them the way you need to to get them into Final Cut Pro. You can import USDZs directly into Motion or use the built-in 3D objects. So if I go to the library, under 3D objects, we have 60 different built-in 3D objects in the USDZ format. I'm gonna take this animated butterfly and add it on top of this clip here. I'll also extend out the animation so it exists for the whole time. And I'll shrink it down a little by holding the shift key down to keep it proportional. And I'll rotate it as well. Next from the behaviors pop-up menu, I'll choose motion tracking, match move, option drag over the young woman. I don't want to track to her face because it will move quite a bit. I'm just going to release the mouse and shrink this down to track her head, which should move less than uh, other parts of her body. And then in the behaviors inspector, I'll disable rotation. You could do that before or afterwards, and I'll click Analyze. And now that butterfly is tracked to her path. So we can see its motion path, and we can still adjust its position in 3D space to have it follow along with her. So the object tracker is a great addition to both Final Cut Pro and Motion. And when you're working in motion, you have a few additional capabilities thanks to the existing point tracker and related features like the average parameter behavior. Finally, Motion has a new filter called Neon. This new filter is also now available in Final Cut Pro. I've got some text here where I've reduced the face opacity all the way down and I just have some outline applied. From the filters pop-up menu, under the glow category is the new Neon filter. And it does kind of what you might expect from a neon filter. And there's plenty of parameters to play with to adjust how bright it is, how much glow it has, and whether the brightness is inner or outer glow, etc. A couple of ways I've used this here, I'll turn this example off and I'll turn this example on. What I've done here is I've added the wriggle parameter behavior in order to animate the amount of glow. So if I select the neon filter, you'll see that that parameter behavior is applied here to the outer brightness, and it is set to subtract the amount of four, and it's only this long in the timeline. So if I play that, it basically does kind of an animated uh, turning on of the neon effect. 
Another thing you can do is add other filters in combination with it. For instance, if I turn the neon filter off and I just turn on light rays, we get a pretty cool effect. But by adding neon to it, it really punches up the look of the light rays. So a very cool new filter in motion. By the way, the object tracker is simple on the surface, but there are a lot of moving parts underneath in both Final Cut Pro and Motion. We have a brand new tutorial in which I do a deep dive on how to get the most out of the tracker in Final Cut Pro, including how to get the best track, how to improve tracks, how to fix interrupted tracks, how to build your own trackable object remover, and much more. You can find it at rippletraining.com. We'd love to know your thoughts. Please leave a comment below. Please consider subscribing. And thanks for watching.